how do you get your probiotics? I'm going to show you how to make water kefir and you're going to love it. Hi, thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to make water kefir. I've been making this for about a year or so now. My friend Kenny showed me how to do it. I thought it would be really, really hard. It's actually very, very easy and absolutely delicious. We're completely hooked on it. So I'm going to start by going to part two, which is a bit silly in a way, but you'll understand my logic when I go through this a little bit more. This is the water kefir after the first ferment. And you'll notice when I open the bottle, little fizz, little bubbles, little bits of wonderfulness in there. And you can see the grains just rising up through the water there. It's just gorgeous. So the first thing that we need to do is take out yesterday's lemon rind that's in there. Um, now you'll notice I'm using very unattractive plastic tongs. This is because kefir doesn't like, well the grains don't like to come into contact with metal. So when you're preparing your kefir, make sure all of your um, tongs and spoons and things are either wooden or plastic. So we just get that out. Oh, don't want to waste those grains. I love to try and get as many of the grains in the bottle as I can rather than losing them. Um, I'm just going to put him to the side for a moment. I've got some organic molasses sugar. There's about a tablespoon of that and I've got two tablespoons of boring old white sugar. You can play with the kinds of sugars that you like to use in your water kefir. I found this is a combo that works pretty well for me. I have done it just with white sugar before and I have done it just with the, um, with the molasses sugar before and I find that a blend works best for me. But have a play, see what you think. I'm just gonna pour in about a cup of freshly boiled filtered water. Now, there's another thing with kefir, it doesn't like uh, metal utensils touching the grains. It also doesn't like chlorinated water. So make sure you put whatever water you're using for your kefir preparation through a filtration process to get the nasties out of it. So when that's dissolved, which it looks like it is, I'm just going to pour that into a Posada bottle. Now this has got cold filtered water in it already. And when I add that in, it comes to about the right temperature for the grains. They don't want to be in really, really hot water. They don't want to be in really cold water either. So that's why I do about a two to one mix there. Okay, that's the easy bit done there. Next bit, another clean bottle. You can sterilize your bottles if you want to. I actually just give them a really good wash in hot, hot soapy water and that seems to be fine for us so far, so good. Okay, plastic uh, funnel and plastic sieve, really unattractive. I'm very sorry, but they do the job. I'm just going to put yesterday's ferment through this so we can capture all of the grains. Give that a little swish, get them all out. Look at all those bubbles in there. Beautiful. Okay, so put him to the side for a second, back to our new bottle. I'm just gonna put the grains into the bottle using my, my nephew's feeding spoon. <laughs> Thanks, Mav. <laughs> that was left behind at a family dinner and I thought, well, find us keepers. Okay, so we need some lemon now. I'm just going to find my knife in the sink. Just a little bit of lemon skin. Uh, you can leave the pith on, doesn't really matter. That goes into there. And put a lid on. Now, give it a little gentle shake about, not too rough. This needs to sit somewhere warm. I normally put it on the kitchen window sill and um, 24 hours is about right. If it's a really cold day, you might need a little longer. 
um, and in the summer just watch it because it can ferment faster and obviously with all those gases rising through the water you're going to um, want to just take the lid off and let some of the gases escape a couple of times. I did have an exploding bottle once, not pretty. That's going up on the windowsill for now. So we come back to this. Now, I like to flavor it up with a few things. Uh, you can play with whatever you like. I know uh, it loves fig. If uh, you wanna try a few slices of fig, that's great. I always add some ginger. I put some turmeric in it. This is from our garden. You can use turmeric powder. You could use ginger powder too, if you want to. I like blueberries. And you'll find when you put the fruit in, all the color leaches out of the fruit. So these blueberries at the end of the ferment will be almost blonde, it's quite weird. It, it just goes into the liquid and makes the kefir a beautiful color. I'm gonna put a little bit of oregano in there too. Um, I know that sounds weird, but it's actually quite yummy. And then, last but not least, oh, my mum's lemon juice squisher. I like a little lemon juice. Okay. So, second ferment is ready to go. Give it a little swirl around. And, oh, can you hear that? It's already fizzy. <laughs> Give that um, some time on a windowsill as well. And you'll probably be drinking that tomorrow. Um, doesn't take long at all. Just get rid of these guys. So this is what I did yesterday. And in this one, I put um, raspberries in and the color's gone into the water and the raspberries, I'll just take the lid off and show you, but the raspberries are, oh, they're completely dissolved actually. There you go. That's what happens in a ferment, I guess. On this one, Beautiful, I had some plum in that. Uh-oh, bit excited. <laughs> this happens. This happens quite a bit, actually. It just goes to show you how boisterous a natural ferment can be. So we like to have our kefir straight up. A um, couple of glasses a day is probably enough, and it's a fantastic to support to the digestive system. You can also throw a little bit of gin in there. That's quite nice as a really refreshing drink. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this one and enjoy it. So frothy. And of course, if you wanna do another round of uh, sieving, you can take the fruit and the, the herbs and stuff out of there. So this will be yummy. you give it a go you can buy your grains at health food shops or online don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and share it with anyone you think might find value in it you can also follow us on facebook and instagram at fern and frost so i hope you enjoy your kefir drinking and creating and i'll be with you again soon take care